homelessness is everywhere in this country. We see them, but we really act, we don't see them. Where they came from and why they become homeless. And we don't know too much about them. Today, I would like to remind you that they're all human and they have a unique story like we do. Let me start with mine. I was born very small village in Turkey. I was working at age nine to support my family financially. Um, that's why I didn't go even elementary school. I wish I go to college like you guys, but I didn't. Years later, I moved to Canada, working with my brother as he, at his pizza shop. I was so happy, but things didn't go well, and I moved out to New York City. The reason I come to New York, I have a friend of mine. We were talking on the phone. He told me, Haki, if you come to New York, it's America's dream. It's big. And I tell him, but I don't speak English. If I come over there, you think it's okay? He said, yes. You come over here, you stay over my house, and I will help you with a job. And January 28, 2001, I came to New York City. I called my friend, and I will go fast forward. He made me wait two and a half days at Port Authority. He didn't come, he didn't help me, he didn't show up. I don't know anyone else, and I don't speak a word of English. I have $240 in my pocket. I went out in Times Square, I see those big buildings. I said, wow, this is America, it's big. Is it true, it's big. So what I'm gonna do, and I find a motel, the cheap, it was every hotel was two, three hundred dollars, but I find cheap motel, and I slept over that couple days, my money finished, and weeks later, I become homeless. To be homeless is, I mean, I was not hopeless, but still, you know, like in, in this country or any other country, to be homeless is hard, is the hardest, harder than anything, is harder than virus. You know, like to don't have place to stay, to don't take shower and to don't eat, you don't have any friends, it's just, you're lost. I met one guy, his name Ronnie, he's from Senegal. He helped me, he took me to Bowery Mission as a homeless shelter. I stayed there for 96 days. And homeless shelter, they helped me a lot. They gave me a place to sleep, take a shower, and uh, share food with other homeless people. I'll be honest, if I say easy, it was not easy. It was hard. But still, you know, no choice. And one lady, she helped me to find a job for me in Hoboken. She explained to me for 30 seconds to go to Hoboken, how to get to Hoboken. But uh, it took me 10 hours to get to Hoboken. And stay go to Hoboken, I went wee hawking. And I got lost. I mean, when you don't know things like, you know, like it's for other people so easy, but when you don't know, it's so hard for me. And I take a bus, another bus, another bus, and I went Hoboken. And I met the guy, his name Jumali. He's somewhere right here, I don't know. So, oh, he's right there. He's a very mean guy, but I'm gonna talk, no, really, he doesn't smile. <laughs> and so he's, he, he never smiled, I never see his teeth. Could you take your mask, please, let people see smile? <laughs> okay, that, he does have a teeth, okay. So I met him, and you know, he told me, what do you know? I said, I'm a pizza man. He said, okay, you now wash your hand, I make one pie, I put the oven, I mess it up. I said, can I make another one? Go ahead. And I make another one, that pie stick and on stone, it didn't came out. I said, take that shit out. I'm like, get angry. <laughs> and I take it out. So uh, I thought he fired me. He said, you know what? He gave me a job as a dishwasher. I walk over there and I couldn't come to New York. He didn't know that I was sleeping in the park, crushed him. And one day, when, two weeks later, he paid me. When I got my first paycheck, I went bathroom and I cried like an hour. Like, I, I cry like a little baby, please guys forgive me, okay? When you go through things, they just, it's too emotional in life. So, and the guy, he caught me, I was like crying in the bathroom. He come to me, said, what happened? 
I told him my situation, and he went to the Jumali. He said, you know, like, do you know this guy, he's homeless, he doesn't have a place to stay? And then he came to me, he says, it's true? I say, yes. So he take me to his house. I sleep in his house for like, I don't know, like three weeks or months. One day he make a joke, he said, hey, this is not homeless shelter, okay? We gotta find a place for you to leave, okay? And, but I was working seven days. But he paid me for six days. He still owe me one day, I believe, yeah. And right now it's overtime. Yeah, so I was, now I have a place, I have a job. I'm so blessed. I met one chef, I'm not gonna say his name. We become friends, we become best friends. And we decided to open a pizza shop. We saved money for four years. We found a beautiful location on the Upper East Side. We went there, we were so excited. Two days before I signed a contract, and then my best friend, he stole all our safe, and he ran away. I mean, I, I cry again, nothing else. And I call him, he says, okay, don't worry about it, no? Life is beautiful, work again, save money again, and if you open the store, I'm gonna help you. But actually, I worked so hard, five more years, and I opened my first store in Lower East Side Manhattan. Thank you. When I opened the first store, I thought I know everything about pizza. Yes, I do, but I don't know nothing about running business. And it was so hard for me. I couldn't pay my like rent beginning, second month, third month, fourth month. And the landlord he came, knocked, like kicked the door, saying, you know, like, this is the last month. If you pay, you pay, you don't pay, I, I take you in, in, in court, okay? So I don't know what to do, I was lost again. But the give up, giving up, it was not an option for me. What saved me and what survived my store? It was a pizza competition. In 2005, I competed at International Pizza Championship. And there were 93 people, and I get 87th place. I was so bad. All I know is just like one trick. Not really, I thought it was like pizza master, but uh, all I know is just one trick. But right now, I do like two, three pizza at the same time, under my leg, whatever, okay? With, with blindfold, or like handcuff, with flaming. I'm not gonna do here today, okay guys? No pizza. But after here, we can go to my pizza shop, have a pizza. So, so when I become like the, and I won the first place. On 2010, there was pizza competition again, and I won the first place. Yeah, that was, and when I come to the first place, and they told me like, Haki, you are the world champion. Of course it was money and, and wallet. They give me money as well. And I went to Florida and I cried a lot. Because that money was a lot to me. I could pay my rent. And they put me like full page of cover, uh, PMQ magazine, a uh, front page. And they sent me like, like two box magazine. And I was given magazine to a lot of kids and neighbors. And TVs, newspaper, they come to my store, they were interviewing me from homeless guy to become like celebrity pizza guy and a neighbor. Everybody, hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing, my friend? So, and I was so blessed. I make money. First store, second store, third store, open and open, okay? I was so blessed. I name it my pizza chain to champion pizza. To always remember the hard work and struggle behind the company name. Well, I'm no success. I thought to be, have money, to have a house, to have a family. I thought that's everything. But uh, I realized, you know, like when you be, you know, when you get, when you achieve your goal and what's your purpose in life, it was not money. I thought to chase money, it was be everything, but it was not money. And I was searching what is Bowery Mission, the place I was staying over there for 96 days. They make me who I am today. And I went over there, there's a red door, I opened the door, and I saw like friends like Isaac, James, Kiki, Kiki passed away two, day, two years ago, God bless him. I see them, I give them a hug, I let them get cry again. I tell them about my story, I'm success, I'm, I own business right now. And I go to Bowery Mission often. I go breaking ground, city relief, and we have a program like Sunday night, 
anybody want to come join us, more than welcome. And we have a Wednesday uh, uh, giving back program on 34th Street Avenue. Again, more than welcome. So we always do those kind of, you know, like uh, events for homeless people on the street. During that time, I met a lot of stories. So I would love to share like just a couple of stories with you guys. Uh, I met Eddie. Eddie, he was a veteran from Iraq war. He fight for this country. And Eddie, he have a really serious trauma issue. He couldn't focus things that we do. And I talked to him and I say, you know, like, if I offer a job, would you willing to work for me? He say yes with a big smile. And I take him, Eddie, to my Soho location. I introduce him to my manager. And my manager, he came in the front, he said, you know, like, Haki, boss, are you sure you want to give him a job? I asked him why. He said he smelled very bad. I saw dirty. Well, someone told me exactly before as well. I, I feel the pain. I take Eddie, take it to a barber shop to give him a nice haircut. And I take him to gym. It was like 20 bucks you pay. You take a shower. He take a nice shower over there. And I take him to clothing store, dress him up very nicely. Eddie, he's like six feet tall. He looked like a model that day. I take him back to my pizza shop. My manager didn't recognize it was the same person a couple of hours ago. I tr it it takes just a couple of hours to transform from a homeless person to a regular person. And Eddie, he worked for me for like, well, like three, four years. Eddie now he have a wife and he have a beautiful daughter, her name Layla. And he always said, Haki, please don't talk to the public about me, okay? I don't know, is it public today? I don't know. <laughs> so, but he's happy. And Alex, Alex, he was a TV producer. One day on set, he got a phone call that his daughter, she got hit by a car. And the that, that accident sent Alex from heaven to hell. Alex, he lost his daughter. And Alex started drinking. And to deal with depression, okay? It's not easy when you lost something in your life. Alex drink and become alcoholic. And it was too late for him to quit. And the film production, they fired him. And Alex, he was making 120,000 a year. It's not just like normal. And then his wife, like a couple months later, she kicked him out from his own house. And Alex become homeless. When I met him, he was coughing so bad. And I said, what do you need? He said, no, like, I need like medicine for coughing. I feel so bad, I'm not, I'm not you know, feeling well. I take him to uh, CDMD, it was like, you know, medical center. So the doctor checked him, he gave him a couple of medicine. They're right, we went to pharmacy, buy him medicine. And I did the same process. I take him like burger shop, shower, and clothing, dress him up. Alex, he said, today I'm not feeling good. Can I come tomorrow? You know what? Alex, he came, yes, next day at 11 a.m. at my Essex Pizza Shop location. And Alex worked for us for like almost two years. Alex, he got a new girlfriend, he had a new life, and he found a job in a film production company. He was so happy. And one day, like on the Christmas Eve, he called me. We have like nice dinner. And in 2020, in June, we lost him during COVID. So, I mean, we all deserve like second chance in life, okay? We are all human. And how can we create a job for, you know, like people they really need? A little bit, it's a lot for a lot of people. And, and say we have like signs, say like, you know, like help wanted or now hiring. You know, like we can go to the street and talk to them, listen to them, get their story, know them very well, open your heart, and they will tell everything they've been going through. Usually they, they don't like to talk because, you know, like they're so shy. They think they're not part of this society. Because we pass by them and we don't say hello to them. We just, we don't see them. Like I said, I mentioned early. And if business owner, I'm sure, you know, like some of you know, have supermarket maybe, they have like construction company, law firm, Everybody have different business. I know about Russian business. I try to do my best to help them and to give you a job in my business. But if you please, if you guys have different business, like at Jumali, you have a gas station, so you could help them, like, you know, hire them in a gas station. So if you help them, 
if they work for you, there will be less homeless people on the street. And I promise you, if they work for you, they will work for you so hard because they struggle so much and they don't want to go back on the street. We all are human and we all have a life story. We all been going through so much struggle in life. And we all need sometime someone to help you. How I start with nothing but like, you know, like multiple location champion pizza. And today I sell my Hikis frozen pizza at over 700 supermarkets. They can achieve their life goal as well. And let's just be kind. And kindness is a free, kindness is a key of success. Kindness is an international language, actually. And let's just be kind for no reason. Thank you so much for having me again.